Yep. I know. A little slow bad on this one. But today we're finally going to be doing the full review of the Smooth 4 Gimbal. All right, guys, so today we're finally going to be doing my full review of the Zion June. Zion. I always said Zion, but then I think in a video somebody corrected me and said it was like June. I don't know. I'm going to keep going with Zion. I apologize if that's wrong. Zoom, June. June? I don't know. It feels weird. Zion seems better. I apologize. The kind folks at, at Zion got these gimbals out to me weeks ago. Didn't want to rush to get a review out on this because there's a lot of features of this gimbal and I wanted to have time to kind of explore it all. And there's a couple things that I really wanted to test out with the gimbal. And those two things, just briefly before we go into it, uh, we'll talk more about them as the video goes. And I've got a full review coming on these also, is Sandmark lens for the iPhone or for mobile phones, they make uh, mobile phone lenses. Really impressed with this lens, by the way. It's super high quality. These kind of step up the game on kind of footage you can get from your phone. And mixed with the gimbal, I thought this would be just top notch. And the other thing is this ND filter. It's just a little clip on, it's made by Newer. It's a adjustable, ND filter. Huge, huge with uh, filming on your iPhone if you really want to get good footage because you all know that 180 rule with your shutter speed. It's really hard to get when it's bright out if you don't use some kind of ND filter. So, But I wanted to test both of these products with the gimbal to see if it could handle the weight or if that would screw it up. I know there's already a bunch of reviews out on this gimbal, so I'm not going to do like a full walkthrough of all the menus and, and a full like every single feature it offers. What I do want to do today is just briefly go over the specs real quick, just to kind of give you an idea of what this gimbal is. I want to talk about the things that really make this gimbal stand out that I think makes it different from other gimbals on the market, and then the bad. We'll go over the, the few cons to this thing. We'll start out with kind of the general specs on this thing. 12 hour battery life, 3.5 hour recharge, payload to 110 grams, composite body weight 547 grams, roll and tilt 340 degrees, USB-C for charging and update, full follow mode, full lock mode, pan mode, portrait mode, time lapse, hyperlapse, motion time lapse, 720p to 4k at 60, slow motion, full manual mode, timer, HDR photo, 180 pano, 3x3 pano, multi exposure, long exposure. also got filters which I mean personally filters eh, I'm not a big fan of filters I think they're pretty useless but they're in there if you're a filter person I'm not judging uh, this gimbal does do an excellent job at giving you a ton of control and just like with a lot of the other Zion gimbals which is a feature I've always liked you do have the capability to charge your phone while you're using this gimbal it's got two-way charging where basically you can be charging this gimbal off of say a mobile power bank and then still running and charging your phone off of the gimbal and both of those activities can be happening at the same time just to really keep your running time up. All right, so before we get into the things that really set this gimbal apart, they're marketing this gimbal as uh, the gimbal for filmmakers. They, they want this gimbal to be more toward the, the creators, the filmmakers, the people that want to adjust their aperture and their shutter speed. They want to you know use rack focus uh, and all these cool things you can do with this gimbal that you can't with other gimbals. I think that's part of their thought process when they went into designing this gimbal and I think that really shows in the features that came out in this gimbal that really make it stand out. First and probably one of the simplest things it's a small thing but it's huge and all gimbals should have this. This arm will lock in place 
to keep it from flapping around everywhere. If you have a gimbal, you know what I'm talking about. Those things are willy nilly when they're off. You lock it, it automatically puts the gimbal in standby mode. So you can keep it like this. It's conserving your battery time so that if you need to get a shot real quick, you're not a lot of time booting the gimbal up. If you need to go, you just click it and boom, it's ready to go. I don't know why all gimbals don't do this. That was really smart of Zion to do that. Really small but cool feature. They did include this really nice tripod. It screws right in the bottom of that quarter 20. It's made of plastic, but it feels like real high quality plastic. It's got nice little rubber feet on it. it spreads out nice and wide, so it's very functional. If you've ever had a gimbal before, you know having one of these tripods attached is just it's paramount because if you want to set this thing down to do a time lapse or anything like that, or if you just get tired and you want to sit it down, it's nice just to have that there where you can just plop it down and not worry about it. This gimbal has buttons and wheels and stuff for pretty much every option you could possibly want so that when you're connected to the, the ZY Play app, you can completely control your phone from the gimbal itself, which is nice because when you touch the phone, it messes with your picture. And if you're trying to film something and change focus by tapping, that's not gonna work out. So buttons galore on this thing for pretty much everything, which A, gives you quick access, and like I said, B, keeps you from having to interact with the phone directly, which is really awesome. Along with all the buttons, one of the other things that I think they've done very cleverly, instead of having to tap through the different modes, which always kind of drove me crazy on gimbals, so you know, having to like tap once to make it full follow, or tap twice to make it pan follow, tap another time, do tilt follow, super like you forget which mode and you're not the fastest way to cycle through your gimbal modes. <clears throat> well, what they've done with this is they've put a front switch that controls it from pan follow to lock. Now you're probably saying, well, okay, but what if you want to change to tilt follow? Well, what they've done to incorporate that is they have this new double ended trigger on the back. If you push the bottom, you are in full follow mode. So if you wanna like pan down, you just push this in, pan down, and when you're at the desired position, you let go and then it stays locked in that position. So if you wanna back away or tilt one way or the other, it still stays in that same pan. I really enjoyed the way this quick switch knob and this full follow trigger kind of works to have, I think, better control over the gimbal much, much quicker than with previous gimbals I've used. I'm really digging the way that works. The top, trigger is going to put you in what they call phone go mode. What it does is it puts additional power to the motors and allows you to whip back and forth very quickly or something goes by quickly. And because gimbals move so smoothly and slowly, you can't keep up with a fast moving object. Push that your motors get more responsive and much tighter and you can quickly whip across and follow some fast movement. The other thing that allows you to do, which is super popular right now is do all your whip transitions. Let's get this thing up and running and we'll show you what I'm talking about. Recording now on the cell phone instead of the big camera. Now you're gonna have to excuse the exposure and stuff because this lighting here is set up from a big camera, not for this, so this picture might look all, not look awesome, but you're gonna get the idea. So you can do some of your cool like whip transitions, like your whip pan, so that's always fun. You just whip it to the side. Probably seen them on other people's vlogs. They're very popular right now. And you're gonna hide your cut in your, in your motion blur. You can do your kind of follow a body part type transition. Look at those crazy little dogs over there. Don't you chew up my football. <laughs> that one's always fun. So you could always do your cover, which is where you kind of cover one shot and uncover in the next. Go something like this. And Allison is behind me making fun of me doing all these transitions. <laughs> Any of those. All right, so back to the big camera much better. Phone go mode really allows for some cool stuff and creative things you can do that you couldn't do necessarily very easily with other gimbals previously. Another really cool option that makes this one stand out in a big way. Okay, so I know what you're saying. You're saying, Jeremy, you've been talking about this gimbal for however long by the time I get done editing this thing, which is probably gonna be long. You've talked about all kinds of stuff and you haven't mentioned the elephant in the room, which is this big old honking knob on the side of this thing. As far as I know, this is the one and only and first mobile phone gimbal to include a follow focus knob. Pretty groundbreaking and neat. What that allows you to do is do really cool focus pulls uh, and get creative with your filming. So doing a focus pull on a cell phone didn't look very cinematic previously, but with this thing, slowly change your focus from one thing to the other and smooth. That I have to say, it does a really, really nice job. And the other thing they've done that's really cool is you can switch this thing over from being a follow focus knob to a zoom knob and it allows you much 
much smoother zooming in and out than you previously could on a phone, which again, just allows you for a lot of creative kind of different shots you can get. You couldn't previously really pull off very well with the phone. Now, the other big feature that they boast on this gimbal that the follow focus knob allows for is the vertigo shots. And a vertigo shot is basically that thing you've seen in the Jaws movie, uh, you've seen it in other movies. I've used it on my vlogs a couple times where you actually zoom out while you pan in or you zoom in while you pan out. And it creates this very warped kind of uh, perception of the background. Really cool looking shot, which is kind of hard to do. So what they've done that's kind of smart on this is they have an automated option where you can go in and you can set it to zoom from here to here over X amount of time and then you don't have to worry about doing the zooming because it's going to slowly zoom that thing in or out for you. All you have to worry about is trying to keep the gimbal nice and steady and pan or walk forward or backward with the gimbal, which was really cool because I could not get crap for one of these shots doing it manually. It would take I would say quite a bit of practice to do it manually, but with that automated mode, I was pretty quickly able to get something pretty decent. Because of the follow focus knob and some of the granular controls they give you in these time-lapse area, motion time-lapse area, you can pull off some stuff that you could not pull off with other gimbal. You can set this thing, say for instance, during your time-lapse to zoom in and out. You can have it zoom in and out while it's panning because it's got motion time-lapse. You can have it start out of focus and come into focus during your motion time lapse, your regular time lapse. You can adjust your shutter speed during your time lapse so you can get nice motion blur on some of your time lapse stuff. So lots of really cool granular controls uh, on these different options that while the options themselves are not unique, the amount of control you have in them is, which uh, makes it kind of stand out. I hope that made sense. I feel like in my head it made sense. Did it make sense? I hope so. Because it's cool. So, yeah. I don't know. The possibilities, though, with all these different options is kind of endless, which, again, I think kind of alludes to why they're they're marketing this toward creators, people that really want to get in there and, and see how many different kinds of shots and different ways you can manipulate these different settings to get cool and different effects that you can't do with other gimbals that offer less control. And another thing that kind of sets this gimbal apart is the price. But, you know, this thing goes for around 139 bucks, and... For that price, I don't think there's another gimbal in the market that offers the amount of stuff that they pack into this gimbal. So, pretty big, yeah. Now, to get to the ugly, the bad. For one, uh, like we were talking about with these guys earlier, if you're truly marketing this thing toward filmmakers, you're gonna want people to be able to use things like this. They're gonna want to be able to adjust their lenses and be able to control their shutter speed by using ND filters and stuff. So. Happy to report this works great. The gimbal has no problem supporting the weight of this. Worked really, really well to help me keep my shutter speed at 180. Had no problems on the gimbal. Unfortunately, this, no bueno on the gimbal. This is made by Sandmark. Very heavy metal and glass lens elements. I mean, super high quality, and it just was a little too much weight for the gimbal to support. To that effect, I'm sure some other uh, of the high quality type of cell phone lenses, like your Moment lenses and stuff, you're probably gonna run into the same thing. So that was kind of a bummer. I was kind of bummed out by that. Supposedly, there are some counterweights that are coming out soon to the market to where you can attach the counterweight to the gimbal to counteract the weight of the lens uh, and allow you to use these things, which I think will be really huge because these things really take your game to a new level. So, you know, hope is not up yet. I'll, I'll get some of those and test them. But I just, I wish Zion would have made the motor strong enough to be able to incorporate some of these really high quality big lenses on here and be able to support that weight. I know in some of the previous crane models uh, with updates, they increased the payload just by tweaking some of the motor settings. So maybe that's something they could do with an update. But for right now, have to report that as a because it doesn't work. Another downfall, it's a little buggy right now, uh, and I'm not gonna fault it too much for that because it is a brand new gimbal and they really shot for the stars with this thing. There's a ton of functionality in here, so getting all that to work seamlessly, I'm sure is a monumental task, but there are some bugs. There's some times the motion time-lapse freaked out on me and got kind of frustrating because it wouldn't, even though it accepted the waypoints the way I put them in, the timelines didn't move the way it was supposed to, and it kind of irritated me a little bit. I can't get the tracking to work as well. Potentially with the hyperlapse, what you could do is instead of trying to follow your subject, if you can motion track the object, 
and that really makes doing hyperlapses so much easier because then the camera is just going to stay locked as you walk around, which would be huge. But so far, the tracking seems a little buggy. I haven't got it to work. But again, I'm not going to give them a huge mark on that because this is all software stuff that can easily be fixed with software updates. And they're putting out updates like constantly. I'm constantly getting updates to the app, updates, firmware updates to the gimbal. So they are updating stuff regularly as they find the stuff. So hopefully in the very near future, all this stuff will be flawless and I can take that, the bugginess off my list of things that for right now are a little. Eh. Uh, and lastly, uh, there doesn't seem to be a selfie mode on this one, like on some of the other gimbals. Could be the limitation on this one only has about a 240 degree uh, pivot on it, so it could be something to do with that. But, you know, some of the other, like the Smooth Q has a gimbal where you tap it and it flips it around in selfie mode, so you can use the good, you know, rear-facing camera to do video rather than using that crappy forward-facing camera, because those cameras are always kind of, eh. I don't know. Uh, I'd kind of like to see or wish it had that. So that's kind of a negative. Overall, I love the gimbal. I think it's great. And as they refine some of these options and tweak some of the stuff on this gimbal and probably even offer more with future firmware updates, the possibilities on this gimbal are endless. For filmmakers or for people that are more serious and trying to make content on their mobile phones, I think the capability of people using mobile phones for legitimate filmmaking and projects is higher and higher. And I think this is a step in that direction. I don't think this is for everybody. I think for some people, like maybe people People that aren't very much into photography don't like a bunch of bells and whistles and all the buttons are just going to confuse them. Maybe sticking with something smaller, more compact and just easier to use like a smooth cue might be a better option. I love that gimbal and it's super small, portable, easy to use. It's not a lot of must fuss, not a lot of buttons to worry about. It just kind of gets you nice smooth footage and easy. So for some people, I still think that would be a better option. But for anybody who is a little more serious about making videos and likes the full control of their camera and to be able to use all these granular options to see what kind of interesting stuff they can create, you're not going to find a better gimbal than this one. So would I recommend it? Sure. Is it for everybody? Eh, maybe, maybe not. That being said, I love it. I'll be using it going forward. Um, I'm looking forward to um, future updates and, and seeing some of the stuff that content creators manage to pump out with this thing. So really pretty stoked about it. And last but not least, a big thank you to Zion Jun Jun. I wish I knew how to pronounce that properly. I'm sorry. Big thanks to them for getting this out to me for review. All right, guys, I think that's it for me today. As always, I will include links down below for everything in this video. So if you're interested in it, you know where to find it. Hopefully you guys found this video useful. If you did, please smash that thumbs up button. If you are not a subscriber, please consider doing so. We'd love to have you on board. Also, quick note, the 10,000 subscriber giveaway we're doing is deadlines coming up here in just a couple days. So uh, if you haven't checked that out, watch our last video with the aperture lights. The details are in that. If you want to enter, you've only got a couple days left. So please do that. Good luck to everybody that has already entered. All right, guys. So that's it for this one. Hope everybody has a fantastic week and we will see you in the next video.